Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Welcome to Elevate Church. We, we do what's called Elevate Nights, is what you basically experience tonight. We do this once a month, and we get a little bit, um, a little bit more deeper. I mean, I think that we're pretty, uh, a pretty uh, spiritual, um, Bible-teaching church. And, and, of course, on Sundays, you know, it, you only get like maybe 35 minutes of message, and, and, and we're just trying to reach as many people as we can. We're speaking to everyone at the table of God, right? We're speaking to the, the person that's far away from God. We're speaking to the person who is new to God. We're speaking to the person that is growing in God and then those that are mature in God. But... Elevate Nights is a night where we really go just a little bit deeper. Is that okay? And so if you're here first time, great to have you here. It's the only service once a month that goes for two hours. It's from 7 to 9. And, um, and we do that because we, we love worship. Wasn't worship incredible? Man, Melody Hernandez, so great to have her here tonight. That was awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, I want to start off with this. I'm not going to go too long because I know we're going to get out of here at 9. It's 828 now, so uh, don't look at your clocks. See yeah, that whole, I, I, the moment you say, don't do this, we do it, right? Like, that's how the enemy gets us. Um, I want to just share a quick message with you, and I'm calling it Into All Truth. And I really believe that that's the theme for tonight. That's what God is saying to us tonight. And um, I don't know about you, but when you think about Hollywood, California, it's like the place that everyone wants to be in, right? Like, when I meet people from other states, they're like, man, I envy you. You know, like, man, you are blessed. You get to live in Cali, and you got mountains, desert, beach. Like, you guys have it all. And, and of course, I always come back with, like, well, <laughs> yeah, we do have the coolest place. And, um, but you know what? There's, a, there's a, uh, um, an article that was written in 2018, and I like this article because um, it, it was showing the reality of, of how many people love coming to Hollywood, California for vacation. And, uh, and it's, it's a number like 50 million people per year come to Hollywood. 50 million people per year. And I just think that that's huge. That's a big number. And they come because they have this desire to want to have an opportunity to, to see a celebrity, right? Like that's why they come. They want to meet a movie star. As a matter of fact, there are companies that have these, these, these guides or these tours that you have to pay in order for you to go and check out the stars, right? You want to go see where they live, where they eat, where they do whatever they do, and 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 they get all excited about it. But there was a report uh, that was done last year in 2018 that um, that a lot of these tours, a lot of these guides, were basically telling the people what they wanted to hear, and they lied to them and told them, you know, this is where. Uh, uh, John Travolta lives, and you know it's like Joe Schmo's house. And this is where, uh, this is where Nacho Libre lives. And this is, you know, they're just like they're like they're just like giving them they're giving them all the fantasies that they want and desire. Basically, they're 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 letting them know what they want to hear, and uh, and so the people were literally paying these companies to take them all throughout Hollywood to go see all the stars, and and uh, and and they were being lied to. The 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 sucky thing is that, you know, sometimes you have those over-exaggerated, fanatic, you know, starstruck people. And what happened was that some of the people that were on these tours would go back to the house at night and break in. And get in the bed of the supposedly actor's house. And, uh, and then, of course, long behold, it wasn't the actor's house. And they'd get arrested. I mean, just a lot of weird things. And, uh, and as I was just thinking about this story, I'm thinking, man, you know, these people were basically paying to be lied to, you know, and we laugh about it. But I, I, I also think when we think about a story like this, um, we have to think about how many of us can relate in some way where we only want to hear what we want to hear and not what we need to hear. That happens to a lot of us, good Christians. We know that we may be off. We know that we may not be in a, in a good place, but, but we want people to stroke our ego, stroke our lies, stroke whatever it is, and we'd rather live there because, you know what, 
to have to come to the full truth is a little bit difficult, right? So we just kind of like, we, we, we begin to develop this, this, this mindset um, of, you know, what, if, if I don't see it, I don't need to deal with it. But, but how many know that God is, is, is completely different? God loves to confront us uh, with truth. God loves to bring us freedom and deliverance. But, but we have to come to the place where we're willing and ready to hear what he has to say. And how many know that uh, when you think about this, you know, here you have these people were paying uh, for lies. Literally, they were paying to be lied to. And, uh, and Satan is no different. You know what? Satan also has a price for his lies in our life. There's a price that is paid. And I want to go with, with you real quick to John 8, 44. And I want you to look up at the screens or if you have your technology or your Bibles, whatever you use for the Bible, open it up. And um, it says this. Look at this. It says, from the beginning, the devil was a murderer. He has never obeyed the truth. There is no truth in him. When he lies... He speaks his natural language. He does this because he's a liar and he is the father of lies. It's interesting, huh? How here we have the devil who is not only the father, but the author of all lies that we tend to believe. And I know that many times in life, we can be in a, in a place where we've experienced something or we've gone through something and then the enemy starts bombarding us with all these lies and then our lies become our truth and the truth becomes the lie. And you don't have to, when you read a verse like this, lies don't have to be so deep in sin, but it can be that you and I, sometimes we purchase, we purchase the ticket for the guide who is the liar to take us on a road trip on a tour of places that we don't belong in and these lies sound like this or look like like this you start thinking i'm not good enough i'm not qualified i'm not smart enough i'm going to fail uh, i'm never going to come out of this depression i'm never going to come out of this anxiety or even the one that you start which i think most of us we give the devil too much credit but even the lie of you not being honest with yourself and I think that's the one that we, as believers, as followers, that we, we, we constantly deal with. It's the one where we can be honest with ourselves. We are buying the ticket of Satan's lies, and we stay there on this cycle or on this tangent. And how many know that you can live there for a long time until you're ready to come to the knowledge and the truth of Jesus Christ? Like, there's, there's just no other way. And I know that this is uh, one of those sensitive uh, topics tonight, but I really believe that God wants to do something, especially as we're celebrating Fourth of, Fourth of July weekend. I mean, what better? We're talking about freedom, and I mean, this is like the perfect message. And so, don't go on tour for a long time with lies. At some point, you got to get off the bus and uh, and see where God wants to take you. Let's now. Let's let me let me let, let me build a little bit of foundation here. Now, let's go to John 16. I'm gonna read seven through eight, and then ten through fifteen. Look at this. It says. This is Jesus telling you and me. He says, but what I'm about, so, so there's Satan. Now here's Jesus. But what I'm about to tell you is, okay, help me out. Be the choir for me, will you? What I'm about to tell you is, so what Satan is about to tell you is lies. What I'm about to tell you is and if you ever want to come out of that place, you're going to have to come back to the truth. But how do I do that? What does that look like? Well, let me just tell you what that looks like. He says this. He says, it is for your good that I am going away. I don't know about you, but man, how could it be good for the disciples when he's telling them, it's, it's going to be to your advantage. It's going to be a blessing when I leave you. Like, if I was his disciple, I'd be like, what the, where are you going? Are you kidding me? Don't leave me here. Take me with you. He says, unless I go away, the friend, the helper, the advocate, the Holy Spirit will not come to help you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And here's the cool thing. Jesus said, it's going to get better for you if I leave. And I know that a lot of us don't think that, but how many know that tonight, if you can just get the, the revelation that your life is going to get better when we hook up with the Holy Spirit again? Yeah. It's going to get better. He says this. He says, 
I will send him to you, and when he comes, he will prove. He will prove. The Holy Spirit will prove that the world's people are guilty. Ouch. He will prove their guilt concerning sin and godliness and judgment. The world is guilty as far as godliness is concerned. That's because I'm going to the Father where you can't see me anymore. The world is guilty. Did I just keep repeating myself? No, no, right, verse 11. The world is guilty as far, it's the NR, NRV version, that's why. It's like, I should have gone with the New King James, that's okay. The world is guilty as far as judgment is concerned. That's because the devil, and I know that in churches you just don't hear that anymore. The devil, there's a devil. If you didn't know that, you now, now, now you've known. He says, the prince of this world, who's the devil? He's the what? He's the prince of this world. So who owns the world? I'm, I'm sorry. Who owns this world? The devil. Who owns the world? The devil. The devil, yes, the devil does own the world. He does. But how many know that you don't have to be a part of his property? You don't. We're not his property. He may own the world, the spirit of the world, but when you got the spirit of God in you, man, you're, you're purchased by God. And he says this. He says, I have much more to say to you. It is more than you can handle right now. In other words, saying, man, right now, you just can't handle it. You can't handle the truth. Remember that movie? What was that movie again? How was that? A few good men, right? Yeah, you know, tell me the truth. You can't handle the truth. And that's what, the, that's what Jesus, he's like, man, we're at a place where you can't handle it. Like, I'm trying to bring you truth, but you're not willing to accept the truth. You're still riding the tour bus of lies. But when the spirit of God, look at that, I love the but. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you. He will what? Guide you. He will what? Guide you. Come on, the Holy Spirit has a guide bus as well. The Holy Spirit will guide you into some truth. Oh, my bad. A little bit of truth. He will guide you into all truth, and he will not speak on his own. So how many know that when, when the Holy Spirit speaks, when God speaks, the Holy Spirit is speaking what the Father says to him. That's what Jesus said too. He says to the, the synagogue people, the, the religious people, the, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, like, hey, listen, I am, I'm only speaking what the Father tells me, and, I'm, and, I, and I only see what the Father showed me. Same, there's, that's the same way with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit saying, hey, listen, I'm only going to bring you to the truth that God has already shown me about you. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is still going to happen. How many want to know what's still going to happen in your life? Then we got to link up with the Holy Spirit. He says, he will bring me glory. That's because what he receives from me, he will show to you. Everything that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, what the Holy Spirit receives from me, he will show to you. The Holy Spirit is our guide, he, and he doesn't lie. He leads us into all truth. When you are a believer of Jesus Christ, you have been born again, and the only reason that we're born again is because the Spirit of God lives in you. He is the only one who made the possibility or even had, gave us the capacity to be born again, to be renewed, to go from a life of sin into a life of truth in order for us to be free. And it was the Holy Spirit who was God's agent that was getting us on that bus of truth that brings deliverance and healing and restoration, all the things that we need. He's the Holy Spirit. Think about it. He's the comforter. He's the counselor. He's the advocate. He's the helper. He's anything and everything we need on this earth. And he is our guide, and our guide is very intelligent. The Holy Spirit is intelligent. He says that he will lead us into all truth. And when you think about a guide, a guide is someone who basically uh, takes you on a tour. And obviously, if they take you on a tour, the only reason they're taking you on that tour is because they've already been there. They've already seen it. And now they're taking you. Well, guess what? The Holy Spirit, if he's the guide that the Bible talks about, then how many know that he's already gone before you and knows how to get you to your final destination? Amen. Amen. He's the one that can get you to that final destination. But it's not that easy because you got you, you to gotta, you gotta get on that bus. That bus. You got to get on that tour. You got to get on that guide of truth. And without that guide, we'll always stay in the place of lies. It's just we're not, we're not going to be able to experience the freedom that, that we're celebrating this weekend, right? 
Fourth of July weekend, freedom, freedom. Well, guess what? God, God wants us to be free as well in an awesome way. And so the Holy Spirit knows how to get you to your destination. The Holy Spirit has already toured your life and my life. Can you believe that? He's already gone. I mean, think about it. God already planned us. He already planned. Vicky, we prayed for her. Vicky, God's already gone before you. He, he already know. He's already been there, done that, got the t-shirt. He's already, he's already been there. What we need to do now is accept the truth that he chose you. He handpicked you. He selected you. He chose you for such a time as this. And we have to stay on that tour bus, that guide of him leading us to that final destination. Look at 1 Corinthians 2, 9, 12. Now, here's our problem, okay? Simple message. Here's our problem. He says, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his what? Spirit. And, and, and so many times I know this this is an issue for all of us, including myself. And sometimes we can be so caught up in a lie, like, you know, you start, you know, building a church, like when we first started here, and the enemy would say, who would want to come to this place? You know, who would want to come to New Hall? You know, who would want to come and be a part of this team? You know, who would want to come and, 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 and spend their time and serve in this house and, and serve this? Like these lies would come and, and, and I would just get on the tour bus of lies and, and defeat and unbelief. And man, before you know it, man, God, listen, God's trying to get me out, but the devil's too busy taking me through the tour. The tour of doubt, the tour of, the tour of fear, the tour of, of unbelief, the tour of you're never going to get out. You're never going to make it. You suck. Like that's the tour that Satan will take you through. But look at this. He says, but God has revealed unto us through his spirit for the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Like right now, if you're in a place that's so deep and dark, guess what? God knows how to, God knows how to send a rescue search team into that deepest place of your life but he also knows how to get you out. He not only finds you, he gets you out of it. It's only by his spirit. And he says, for what man knows, the things of a man, except the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of, of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us. Everybody say free 99. See, so Satan is making us pay with all the lies while God is trying to bring us on the guide and the tour of truth for free 99. He's like, man, I'm trying to give this to you for free. I'm trying to give you a freedom. I'm trying to give you freedom from, from addiction, freedom from depression, freedom from anxiety, freedom from lust, freedom from whatever it is that you're bound with. God's saying, I'm trying to tell you that I, my spirit is the answer to your freedom. My Holy Spirit is the answer. And how many know that it's, it's almost like the enemy knows how to get the church. And I'm going to be just a little bit vulnerable because I can. I'm a pastor and, and I can talk about this because I think that as churches, sometimes you know what? We do good jobs. There's a lot of churches that do a great job at building churches. I mean, they can fill them, and they've got great programs, great everything, and it's awesome. And I appreciate that. I pray that we keep expanding and growing as a church. But I think that, that sometimes we can get so caught up on the strategy, the program, and, and without even knowing. Like, we can become these workers and, and we're building something. Like God said this. He said, unless the Lord builds the house, those who labor, labor in vain. That goes for your life too. Unless the Lord builds your house, those who labor, labor in vain. So when you're trying to just stay on the bus of lies, the tour of lies, he says, unless I build it, you're going to stay in lies. It's not going to happen. But what I've noticed is that there's an interesting thing that's happening with the church of today in America. Where we are, we are great at... At growing churches, we are great at building churches, and, and it's awesome that we see a lot of people coming to Christ, but have you noticed that, that people come to Christ and then they don't grow from there? It, it's almost like we got rooms filled with people, but there is no spiritual growth. And God has called us to reproduce our faith. God has called us to reproduce our faith in someone else. God has called us to reproduce what God has done in us. The transformation that's happened inside of us, 
by the Holy Spirit, God wants us to go and reproduce that in someone else's life. But what happens in this culture today in church is that we're a lot of attenders, but there's not a lot of growth. Your faith, how you live your faith out should inspire other people to say, what is it about you that's different? Your life, how you live your faith should inspire people to say, man, how did you get that freedom? How do you have that peace? How is it that you have this joy? And what happens is, is that in church today, and we can't blame it all on churches. It's also people because at the end of the day, every Christian is responsible for their own spiritual growth. But, of course, as a church, we are also the guides. We have taken out the Holy Spirit because it's not relevant. And what are people going to think? You know, people, you start talking about the Holy Spirit, we're like, whoa, uh, God I heard of, Jesus I heard of, but who's this Holy Spirit thing? And, and, and you know what? And we start catering based on what people want to hear instead of what they need to hear. And Jesus said it very clearly. He says, it's, it's to your advantage that I leave so that the spirit of truth can guide you the rest of your life. I mean, if Jesus himself is saying, you're going to benefit from me leaving. If I stay with you, you're not going to benefit much because you're always going to be depending on me. But how many know that God shares his vision with his kids? God shares his, his, his blessing, his inheritance. He shares it with you and I. And he says, but my spirit is going to help you through it. And I get it because I know that many of us sometimes, we can be in that place where we're just exhausted. We're tired. When you read people like Paul in the Bible, which I was reading all morning this uh, today, I mean, there's, there's just... There's this, this mindset that we think like they were just these perfect followers of Jesus Christ. No, let me tell you something. Just about every disciple fell into some type of depression at some point in their ministry. They were in a place of unbelief, in a place of, you know what, where are you, God, in this situation? Just like you and I are. But let me tell you something. The only way that we're able to, to come to this truth is this way. Look at 1 Corinthians 2.14. One more verse and then boom. Watch this. It says, the person without the spirit doesn't accept the things that come from the Spirit of God. These things are foolishness to them. Have you ever had someone say, what kind of church do you go to? Right? Like, they'll, 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 they'll accept Baptist, Presbyterian, Episcopalian, you know, uh, Catholic. But the moment you say non-denominational, like, whoa, what does that mean? Are you one of them, like, charismatic, Holy Ghost churches? <laughs> Right? Like, I always get that. Like, man, I hate it when, especially when they say, you know, what do you do for a living? Oh, great. I'm a, I'm a pastor. Okay, and then that's it. It's, it gets weird. And then, and then when they, they're like, so what do you guys believe? I'm like, oh, great. We, we, we believe in the Bible, period. But, but, but people start getting weird about when you talk about the Holy Spirit. And so God's saying, you're never going to come to the place of true freedom, right? There's temporary. You may go buy yourself a nice vacation and feel free for a week. You come back to your problems. You know, you can go ahead and, you know, you know, quit your job, go to a different job because you think that, you know what? Well, if I just change locations, if I just change states, then everything is going to be amazingly wonderful. But the problem is that you still took you with you. <laughs> That's the truth. And so, so many times we're expecting or we have this, this mindset that, well, the reason I haven't been healed is because of that person. Or the reason I haven't been restored is because of that experience. And the reason that I'm still here and stuck in, 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 in 2019 was because of that situation. God say, no, 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 no. See, God says, I'm not going to address the outer issues. I want to start with you. I'm going to start with the internal... Think about it. When the disciples were in the, on the boat and Jesus says, let's go to the other side, what happens? The devil whips up a big old storm because they were going to go to the other side. And now the disciples are freaked out, scared. Jesus is sleeping in the stern. And they're like, don't you even care about us? Like many of us have done. Like, you don't even care. You don't even hear my prayers. You know, God, you know, and we, you know, we, we, we act like children sometimes, right? And, and you know what? Jesus gets up, and he speaks to the storm. He shuts the storm down, and he looks at them, and he straight up said, where's your faith? He didn't say, why don't you have faith? He said, where'd you put it? And I think so many times we put our faith more in our problem than we do on Jesus. We put more faith in our circumstance than we do the answer. We put more faith in people than we do God. And we think that if that person just does X, Y, and Z for me, I'm going to be fine. Let me tell you something. No, you're not. That's not the truth. 
well, I'm just waiting for so-and-so to, to ask me for forgiveness. Well, you might be waiting for a very long time. It may be on your deathbed when they come and say, please forgive me. But meanwhile, you live like hell. Meanwhile, you're still on the tour bus of lies and the devil, devil's letting you hear everything you want to hear. And you're just like, <laughs> <laughs> and you're just there. There's a lot of Christians like that. We're just, we're just like, we're, we're indebted with lies, and, and then we're just waiting for God to do something. God's saying, it's by my spirit that will guide you into all truth. Outside of my spirit, lies. Inside my spirit or my spirit inside of you, truth. And the truth will make you free. Maybe it's not a circumstance. Maybe it's not the devil. Maybe it's you. Maybe you lack to see the truth because I don't know about you I know when I'm wrong and I know when I'm off the devil don't have to come tell me I'm off I know I'm off you know when you're off you know when you're wrong and you know when you're right you know that but what do we do we rather stay on the on the tour bus of lies because we rather hear what we want to hear and not what we need to hear are you with me tonight look at this Let's read it again. The person without the spirit doesn't accept the things that come from the spirit of God. That means you got to be spiritual, man. Yeah. You got to come to the, like, like if the Holy Spirit is not in, inside of you, if the spirit of God is not moving in a church, there's, there's, that's a problem. He says, these things are foolish to them. They can't understand them. In fact, such things can't even be understood without the spirit's help. Like, Right now, whatever it is that you're facing, whatever challenge, whatever trouble, only the Holy Spirit can interpret for you the answer. Right now, for some of us, it's jibber-jabber. It's foreign. I can't understand. I can't. God's like, let my spirit interpret that for you. My Holy Spirit is the best interpreter. As a matter of fact, he's also known as the interpreter. He will interpret the things you pray in the spirit. When you pray in the spirit, the Holy Spirit can interpret what you pray to God. And so, I really believe that God wants to bring us back to that place, to the truth. And, and this message is not to shame us. It's not to make anyone feel bad. It's not to, you know, single anyone out. Because I promise you, every single one of us at some point of our Christian walk or our life, we have all been on the tour bus of lies. We have all been guided by lies every single one of us but the spirit of god is the only one who has the truth and that truth can set each and every single one of us free can we give the lord a hand clap for that <laughs> think about it the key to personal growth is the holy spirit you won't grow you won't mature we need to mature in 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 the things of the spirit you need the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, anytime Paul went to preach the gospel, the first question he would ask him, read, read the book of Acts. Hey, have you received the Holy Spirit yet? They're like, never heard of a Holy Spirit. What is this Holy Spirit thing? What are you talking about? And they're like, and he'd be like, well, what's, what baptism did you receive? They're like, well, you know, we got baptized by John the Baptist. They believed in water baptism, but they hadn't believed in the baptism of the Holy Spirit yet. And they're like, well, how do we get some of that? He said, well, come over here. I'm going to lay hands on you, and the Holy Spirit is going to ignite your life, and the Spirit of God is going to be evident in your life so that you can be a witness, a true witness for me on this earth. Like that's every, every disciple. Have you heard of the Holy Spirit? Who's this? Who's this Holy Spirit I'm hearing about? We would not have a Bible if it wasn't for the men and women who did the Acts of the Bible. The book of Acts was not the Acts of God. The book of Acts was the Acts of every disciple. And the only way they did it was by the Holy Spirit. The only, the only way they were able to overcome was by the Holy Spirit. Remember I was sharing earlier in worship, Elijah, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. If it worked in Old Testament, it was still good for New Testament. From the beginning, the Holy Spirit was with God at the creation of this earth. He says that the earth was void and it was empty, but the Holy Spirit hovered when God said, let there be Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit is the only one that can bring light to anything that has been deformed. 
or unformed. And the Holy Spirit will begin to form you. Because right now, some of us, we're chewing on a lie. And it's forming your character. It's forming your attitude. It's forming even how you perceive, how you see people. It's forming how you judge people. It's, it, it's listen, the world, the spirit of this world, it, 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 it conforms us to it. That's why in Romans 12, he says, and do not be conformed to the spirit of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, guess what? The only way to get transformed is by the Holy Spirit. There's no other way. There's no other way. I know this is a simple message, but let me tell you something. I think if we had more Holy Spirit awareness living it, he doesn't walk next to us. He doesn't walk behind us. He doesn't walk in front of us. He doesn't walk to the left of us. No, he walks with you inside of you he's inside the holy spirit if you are a born again christian if you are a believer of of the 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 powerful message of the cross man i'm telling you god gave you the spirit his spirit and it's not just any spirit he's a holy spirit there's peace in his spirit there's answers in his spirit man the holy spirit wants to lead the church in 2019 back to the truth Back to the truth. And I know there's many of us here that we are chewing on something right now. And it ain't gum. We're chewing on some lie. We're chewing on some doubt. You're chewing on something like, I don't know what you're chewing on, but we're all chewing on something. Trust me. We're all at different levels. Trust me. My, my, my uh, choice of stick that I'm chewing doesn't look like your stick. But we're all chewing on something right now. But the spirit of truth can help you overcome that and lead you and guide you into all truth. And before you know it, you'll overcome that lie by his truth. There's no other way. I want you to stand to your feet. As we prepare to leave, I, I just, I know this is, this relates to all of us. And the reason that, that some of you right now feel like, man, I'm stuck. Man, I can't get out of this. You know, I don't know what's going on. Here's the truth. The truth is that we've been meditating on lies. That's, that's, that's the simple answer for all of us. The question is, what lie are you chewing on? And you have to bring that lie to the Father through the Holy Spirit and say, Father, I've been chewing on this lie that I'm not good enough, that I'm not smart enough, that I'll never get out of this lifestyle, that I'll never get out of this dark place, that, that this depression belongs to me, that this disease, this sickness is mine. No, let me tell you something. That's not the truth. The truth of the matter is, is that the Holy Spirit overcomes and has overcome everything in your past, present, and future because he's already been there and done that. The only question is, when will you come back to the truth? When we get the Holy Spirit back in our life, when we get the Holy Spirit back in our churches, when we get the Holy Spirit back in our conversation, when we begin to have a conversation like this, what's the Spirit of God telling you? You know what he told me tonight? He told me X, Y, Z, A, B, C, one, two, three. Man, this is what he spoke. Like if we start having that language, let me tell you something. That language will become your truth. Lift your hands to heaven. This is a prayer for all of us, every single one of us. And as we celebrate the fourth, I'm praying that we would have the revelation, that we would come to the truth, the truth. And the truth is Jesus. Jesus is the truth. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. So, Father, I pray that tonight, as you see our hands lifted high, Lord, we're all being honest here. We all have a little bit of lies that come into our heads, our thoughts. Lies that come to deceive, lies that come to steal, lies that come to kill, lies that come to destroy what you call to bless, what you call to flourish, what you call to reproduce. I pray in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We ask you that you would 
fill us up again. Give us a fresh fire, a fresh baptism. Let us not just be hearers of your word tonight, but let us be doers of that word, Father. Help us to come to the truth. Holy Spirit, help us to see the truth of our mess. Help us to see the reality and to stop wanting to hear what we want to hear and to tell you, God, I'm ready to hear what I need to hear. We're ready to receive the whole counsel of God, the whole truth of God. I thank you, Father, that you bring truth without shame. You bring truth without condemnation. You bring truth without any form of guilt. Your truth makes us free. Your truth brings us love. Your truth brings us joy. Your truth brings us peace. Your truth brings us conviction to change and repentance. And so, Father, tonight we repent for any lies that we have been chewing on for too long and letting the devil steal days and weeks and months and years from our life. Lord, tonight we pray that there is a Holy Ghost reset in our spirit, man. And Lord, we are conforming not to this world, but we are being transformed and renewed in the spirit of our mind by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come on, lift up your hands and say, Holy Spirit, ignite me tonight. Holy Spirit, break out in my life. Come on, just lift your hands. Just worship and tell the Holy Spirit, I need you. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.